name's Steve Warriner. I'm the Exploration Manager for Australia Resources. We're drilling here at the Carboy Project. Carboy is some 80 kilometres north and northeast of Kalgoorlie Boulder. Carboy has a very long history, some 52 odd years. It was first discovered in 1968. It was mined by Western Mining in the early 70s and then essentially went through multiple ownerships since then. In 2017, Apollo Resources, run by Chris Dawes, who has Australia Resources Managing Director. Chris managed to consolidate all of these tenements and then that has been passed on to Australia Resources. So the Carboy Complex has been heavily explored for 50 years. Why should we be any different to any other explorer? Well, nowadays we understand a lot more about uh, intrusive nickel deposits, particularly what we like to call the basal contact. With uh, nickel deposits, gravity is our friend and nickel sulphides will always tend to settle on the lowest point. We have put a lot of science and understanding what the orientation of this intrusion was when the nickel was first laid down. Now that we understand that, we understand what we call the base of contact, the most prospective part of the cowboy complex. We understand where that is. We've mapped it. We've mapped some 30 kilometres of this base of contact. We have a lot of exploring to do. To aid us in this, as I said, we've done a lot of mapping, but we also commenced an R&D project where we did seismic along the section of the base of contact where we're drilling now and that is really to understand what the base of contact shape was, particularly at depth. One, if we're going to target it, we need to know where it is. And two, because what we talk about in geology as a trap site for nickel sulphides has very much to do with the shape of the base of contact and the change in shape of the base of contact. Australia Resources commenced phase one uh, drilling here in August last year. They drilled a couple of drill holes with Neil Hutchison. They located nickel sulphides on the basal contact, essentially commenced phase two drilling, which was to step back with a diamond rig and really understand what that looked like. That's where hole 30 came from. That was an absolute cracker of an intersection. Massive sulphides on the basal contact, wonderful. Phase two then commenced to expand on that initial discovery. What we found in that expansion, doing electro downhole at EM, what we call electromagnetic studies, and uh, drilling out, stepping out further, was that just because we didn't have an electromagnetic signal indicating there were sulphides there, didn't mean that we didn't actually intersect nickel sulphides on that base of contact. So we realized there's a lot more that we needed to understand about the project. We then commenced phase three, and phase three was specifically about coming back into that discovery hole and drilling around this area to get a very detailed look at what the textures of the sulphides, what the textures of the rock, and the flow dynamics are telling us about where we might locate nickel sulphides. Why are they here what, at T5, and where could they be in the future? Flow dynamics are exceptionally important, particularly in intrusive nickel deposits, to understanding where the nickel sulphides would be deposited and where we're going to find more of them because that's the key, we want to find more. We also suspect that the nickel sulphides that we found on the base of contact here at T5 are in some way linked at depth to the, the nickel sulphides that were mined at the Carboid mine sub one kilometre south of us. The de depositional environment is very different for the two. Carboid is uh, come up from depth as a breccia sulphide. T5 sulphides are found on the base of contact and essentially we can draw a line between those two and explore at depth using our seismic, using 50 years of history of geophysical exploration in this area to target those with some deep drilling. Phase, phase three is really about understanding what that link might be at depth. Another aspect of phase three drilling is step out away from where we're drilling with these two rigs here and to understand what the structural overprint, the post-depositional structure has done to the location of the ore body. From the understanding that we obtained from the phase three drilling, combined with our seismic survey, we should be able to get a really good handle on our planning efforts for phase four. And phase four is where we start to step away. At T5 here, we still have another three and a half kilometers of this peroxinite basal contact to test behind us. Phase four will then start to step away, work up three and a half kilometers behind us, work south back towards the carboid look, mine another 1.2 kilometers and beyond that. Phase five after that, which will occur probably earlier next year, will be governed by the research collaboration project that we're going to start doing with the CSIRO, where we're going to look at the surface geochemistry, particularly with the element traces that 
vector us in towards nickel mineralisation that might be near surface. When Australia Resources first started drilling back in August last year, the guys were living out of tents. I joined the company in January this year and we have just put in a new camp. Camp houses 16 people, at the moment there's 18, a couple of caravans, we're at capacity and it's really been beneficial to our, our exploration push here. It can get really cold in winter like it is today, really hot in summer and it, for us to retain people in, in this environment we really need to provide some sort of facilities for them. Apart from the camp, Australia Resources is putting a fully functioning courtyard, offices, fuel bay, we're really here for the long haul. As an exploration geologist with 20 years of nickel experience, I'm really excited about this project. Carboid is old, it's a very old intrusion and it has a lot of potential. The size of Carboid is around 180 square kilometres. We've got 30 kilometres of base of contact which hasn't been explored. When I say that, there's about 5 kilometres of base of contact that has been explored under 30 metres depth. The rest of it is completely open. Really excited time to be here. I feel that the Carboid Nickel Project has a really bright future.